Hello, everyone, and welcome to our third Stephen King Shocktober movie. Um, was never trying to do that on purpose, kind of just the way it worked out. And honestly, this is like the first movie I watched for Shocktober, but, um, you know, I, it kind of just the order of which I was going to review them got uh, worked around. But uh, today I'm going to be talking about The Dark Tower, which was a 2017 Stephen King movie released in theaters that did not do very well, but still had me kind of curious. Um, I have never read a Stephen King book. I have never read The Dark Tower. I know of its history and its legacy and of how batshit crazy it is and gets. And I've, I went through and read a lot of the Wikipedia for each book like a long time ago. And I was just like, oh my God, I can't even follow this. This sounds crazy, but I should probably read these one day. Um, so I kind of know the gist of The Dark Tower. Um, so the plot synopsis is the last gunslinger, Roland Deschain, has been locked in an eternal battle with Walter O'Dim, also known as the Man in Black, and determined to prevent him from toppling the Dark Tower that holds the universe together. With the fate of the world at stake, good and evil will collide in the ultimate battle as only Roland can defend the tower from the Man in Black. And the film is directed by Nicolaj Arcel and uh, written by Akiva Goldsman, uh, who's, you know, is a name you'd recognize in a lot of places. He's done a lot of work. There's another screenwriter here I'm trying to pull up, but my, uh, Jeff Pinker, uh, also, man, this movie has a lot of, a lot of writers. Nick, Nicolaj Arcel also wrote on it, Anders Thomas Jensen, and then, you know, based on Stephen King. So the dark tower, um, this movie was not very good. I, I had very low expectations for it just kind of going off the buzz that the movie got when it came out or lack thereof. Um, and the, the movie even managed to disappoint from that aspect. Like I came out of it thinking th there was like everything in this movie had potential to be good, but it kind of just came off. Like, first of all, it's not enough. Like there's so much to the story. I still don't understand. And it definitely feels like it requires like, Oh, if you've read the whole series and this movie's for you and also not for you, cause you're probably not going to like it. But you know, as somebody who only has passing knowledge of the series, uh, I was, you know, I, you know, I got what the movie was trying to get across. Um, the idea of turning it, who is completely not even mentioned in the plot synopsis, uh, a story revolving around the child, who has the shining, which is this movie is basically just an excuse to like, we're going to create a Stephen King universe and we're going to have all these references and things. Like I believe there's a Cujo reference. There's multiple shining references. There's a 1408 reference. Um, there are references to Stephen King's work all over this movie. So, you know, maybe just pull up a Google page and look up the references, but it kind of felt like that was the whole point of since this movie does deal with, multiple dimensions and portals to other worlds and stuff you get the idea that like oh this was going to be their bridge to a stephen king universe and then you know maybe there would be a portal to the it universe and stuff which came out the same year but you know it it was just not a good movie it's very boring for most of it i will say all the performances are pretty good except for matthew mcconaughey you know the oscar winner who is just hamming it up as much as possible there's a fantastic scene where he so he has these magic powers that are never really explained of like you know what they can do what is the limit but there's a scene where he is just walking down the street and there's this young girl with her mom with ice cream and being like kind of sweet and he just says the word hate as he walks by and all of a sudden the girl's like eyes turn black and she gets all serious and the mom's just like oh what's wrong sweetie and it's just like so ridiculous and we never come back to it it's just like you assume that the fucking daughter is now just going to be a fucking monster to the mom, but there's no payoff for it. Like, it's just a scene that's there to show like, Hey, our man in black, he's real bad. And like, so the first time you see Matthew McConaughey as the man in black who is named Walter, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, he is just like over this guy who's dying and they're talking. And this was kind of the perfect, like heads up they're like hey this movie is not written very well when so they're having a dialogue scene and this guy's dying and walter comes over him and he's talking to him this is a big monologue about oh you're just waiting to see what's going to come after you in the afterlife a heaven or a hell he's like well there is no afterlife it's just nothing after that and then the guy tells him to go to hell 
And he's like, oh, I've been there already. It's like, but you just fucking said there's no afterlife. Like, what are you talking about? Like, this is all within, like, the same dialogue exchange, and it's already conflicting and doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't know. So it, the movie just feels really rushed. There are multiple scenes that seem completely unattached to each other. And like I said, that man in black scene contributes nothing to the story other than, like, giving Matthew McConaughey a bad guy dialogue. Um, and, you know, he doesn't do much in the movie to begin with. Like, he's just kind of there to be brooding, and he's looking for the kid. And um, it's it's just – I was very bored. Um, I bought this movie for $5 on iTunes. Like, it was on sale a while back. I was like, yeah, hey, you know what, 5 bucks, I'll, I'll kick it towards this movie. I, my curiosity is enough. I, I feel like I wasted $5. I will probably never watch this again. The best part of this movie can be summed up in a YouTube clip, um, which is so, you know, Roland is the gunslinger and um, he's uh, he's kind of like over, you know, like he's he feels like he has lost and his character arc is he has to regain his bravery, basically, and step up and be the gunslinger. And um, some of the more fun parts of the movie do come with Roland and it's, you know, eventually. So the kid finds a portal to like he has all these visions and he finds a portal to the dark tower world or whatever you want to call it and then he ends up bringing Edris Elba to um earth and you know they go get him a bunch of weapons and shit uh and there's like a, a fun scene so like the dark tower world clearly takes place in like a apocalyptic world so he gets shot and they take him to a hospital or he gets injured he gets like stabbed by some animal and they take him to the hospital and, you know, he's getting all patched up and stuff. And uh, there's a fun little scene where, like, the doctors come to talk to him. It's like, oh, you know, like, he's like, am I good to go? Am I, am I healed? And like, yeah, you know, we, we healed your wound, but you tested positive for hepatitis A, B, and C, and severe radiation poisoning. And he's just like, so can I go? Because, like, just not understanding. He's not from this world. And I don't know, that, that scene was kind of fun to me. Um, he's just like, he doesn't care. It's all about the job. But, I mean, yeah, honestly, the best part is, you know, Roland has this big gunfight at the end. And, you know, the the trailer shows a lot of cool gun stuff of him, like, flicking bullets into the chamber of his revolver and stuff like that. And there's just not a whole lot of that in the movie. There's, like, one action scene in the middle and then the one action scene at the end and then the fight with the man in black, which that is terrible and laughable in every aspect of it and you kind of just have to see it to believe it i can't even describe how bad it is but it's a gunslinger fighting a guy with apparently psychic powers telekinetic powers and it's it's not good it goes about as well as you would expect um but yeah th there's a gunfight before that where roland is just going through this building just gunning down dudes and jumping stuff and like that's the one cool action scene of the movie is it's the gunslinger doing the thing you want to see him do and that's fucking awesome and then the rest of the movie is just so boring and i don't care i actually thought the kid was good in it and uh, i i wish i could remember i've seen him in something else let's see if i can click on the imdb here and i think he's a good actor and you know i think he'll continue to be a good actor but you know this movie it was just not very good for any of them and i kind of feel bad for them because it's for, for the whole idea of like oh they were going to make a dark tower movie and then a Dark Tower series, and then another movie, and, you know, kind of try to build this whole Dark Tower universe, I think that could have been cool, but, uh, okay, so the kid is Tom Taylor, trying to see what else he did, because I, I had heard people say that they thought he was bad in this movie, but I personally didn't think so, um, hmm, filmography, filmography, where is his movies, come on, IMDB, where you got Okay, all filmography. I don't, he's only got five credits to his name. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I hadn't seen him in something else. Okay. Well, he he was good in the movie. Uh, I liked him in the movie. Uh, but uh, Edris Elba is really the highlight in that one action scene. So I would say watch it on YouTube. If you're morbidly curious, maybe give it a shot. But overall, a very skippable movie. So that's going to be it for today's episode. Be sure to check back tomorrow when we will have a little anime-based horror film. You can probably guess what that is. Uh, so be sure to check back tomorrow, and I will see you for that episode.